Welcome back to Our Weird World. This week, we're going to take a little detour in our expedition of strange creatures from around the world and spin a yarn about one instead. Pull up a chair and join us around the bonfire this week as we tell the tale of Finn and the Puka. In the misty highlands of ancient Ireland, where the wild heather paints the landscape with purples and greens, there exists a glen untouched by time, a place known to the locals as the Enchanted Glen. This glen was believed to be the domain of a puka, a legendary creature of immense power and mystery. The following tale, passed down through countless generations, is one of the most well-known stories of the puka and serves as a timeless reminder of the delicate balance between the mortal world and the realm of the fae. The Enchanted Glen was a place of unparalleled beauty and serenity. Hidden away from the prying eyes of the modern world, it was a sanctuary where the ancient magic of Ireland still thrived. The glen was surrounded by tall, whispering trees, their leaves shimmering with a silvery glow under the moonlight. At its heart lay a crystal-clear lake, its waters said to hold the secrets of the ages. The puka, a shape-shifting spirit of the glen, was known to take many forms. Sometimes it appeared as a sleek black horse with fiery eyes, at other times as a mischievous goat or a giant hare. However, the most feared form was that of a dark, elusive fairy with eyes that seemed to see into the very soul of those it encountered. In a small village not far from the Enchanted Glen, there lived a young shepherd named Finn. Finn was a kind-hearted and curious young man, known for his adventurous spirit and love of nature. He spent his days tending to his flock and guiding them through the rolling hills and verdant pastures that surrounded the village. Finn had always been fascinated by stories of the puka. The villagers often spoke of the creature with a mix of fear and reverence, recounting tales of its pranks and the strange occurrences that followed in its wake. Despite the warnings, Finn felt a strange pull towards the enchanted glen, a desire to see the puka for himself and to understand the mysteries that lie within. One autumn evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon and the sky was painted with hues of orange and pink, Finn decided to venture into the enchanted glade. With his trusty dog, Bramble, by his side, he sat out on a journey that would change his life forever. The path to the enchanted glen was treacherous and overgrown, winding through dense forests and across babbling brooks. The air grew cooler as Finn and Bramble ventured deeper into the woods, the light of the setting sun barely penetrating the thick canopy above. As they neared the glen, a sense of unease settled over Finn. The stories he had heard echoed in his mind, reminding him of the puka's mischievous nature. Yet his curiosity drove him onward, determined to uncover the truth behind the legend. At last, they reached the edge of the enchanted glen. The sight that greeted them was both breathtaking and surreal. The glen was bathed in a soft, ethereal light, the trees swaying gently as if whispering secrets to one another. The crystal-clear lake shimmered like a mirror, reflecting the beauty of the surrounding landscape. Finn took a deep breath and stepped into the glen, his heart pounding with a mix of excitement and trepidation. Bramble stayed close by his side, the faithful dog's eyes scanning the area for any signs of danger. As they explored the glen, Finn noticed a peculiar stillness in the air. It was as if the very land held its breath, waiting for something to happen. Suddenly, a rustling sound broke the silence, and a figure emerged from the shadows. Before Finn stood a magnificent horse, its eyes glowing with an otherworldly light. The creature's presence was both awe-inspiring and intimidating, and Finn realized at once that he was in the presence of the puka. The puka regarded Flynn with a curious gaze, its eyes seeming to pierce through to his very soul. Who are you, young shepherd, and why have you ventured into my domain? The puka asked, its voice a melodic blend of human and animal tones. Finn swallowed his fear and stepped forward, determined to make a good impression. My name is Finn, and I have come to seek the truth about the stories of the puka. I wish to understand the magic of this land and the mysteries that lie within. The puka's eyes sparkled with amusement. You are brave, Finn, but bravery alone will not grant you the answers you seek. To understand the magic of this land, you must prove yourself worthy. The puka's challenge intrigued Finn. He had always believed that courage and determination could overcome any obstacle, and now was his time to prove it. What must I do to prove myself worthy, he asked. The puka transformed before his eyes, shifting into the form of a dark fairy. There are three tasks you must complete, the puka said. Only then will you be granted the knowledge that you seek. The first task is to retrieve the golden feather from the nest of the great eagle, the legendary bird that resides atop the highest peak in the land. The second task is to find the hidden spring of eternal youth, said to be guarded by a fierce and cunning guardian. 
and your third and final task will be to bring back a piece of the ancient stone from the ruins of the old kingdom, the place shrouded in mystery and danger. Finn accepted the challenge without hesitation, his determination unwavering. With Bramble by his side, he set out to complete the tasks and prove he was worthy to the puka. The journey to the great eagle's nest was arduous and fraught with peril. Finn and Bramble climbed steep, rocky slopes and navigated treacherous terrain, their progress slow but steady. The air grew thin as they ascended, the chill of the mountain biting into their skin. At last, they reached the peak, where the great eagle's nest was perched precariously on a narrow ledge. The eagle, a majestic bird with wings that spanned the sky, watched them with keen, piercing eyes. Finn and Bramble approached the nest cautiously from opposite sides. Finn's heart pounded in his chest. He knew that the eagle would not part with its golden feather willingly. As he darted to grab the feather, the eagle let out a deafening screech and lunged at him, its talons sharp and deadly. Bramble sprang into action, barking and nipping at the eagle's legs to distract it. Seizing the moment, Finn grabbed the golden feather and retreated quickly, narrowly avoiding the eagle's grasp. With the feather in hand and Bramble's ferocious bark, the eagle kept its distance as they made their way back down the mountain, exhausted but triumphant. The next task led Finn and Bramble to the heart of an ancient forest, where the hidden spring of eternal youth was said to be located. The forest was dense and twisting, filled with towering trees and thick underbrush. The air was heavy with the scent of moss and earth, and the sounds of wildlife echoed all around them. As they ventured deeper into the forest, they crossed the treacherous swamps, navigated through dense thickets, and evaded the watchful eyes of the forest's inhabitants. At last, they reached the clearing where the hidden spring lay. The water sparkled with an otherworldly glow, and a sense of peace and tranquility filled the air. However, the guardian of the spring, a fearsome creature with the body of a lion and the wings of a dragon, stood between them and their goal. The guardian roared, its eyes blazing with anger. Who dares approach the sacred spring, it demanded. Finn stepped forward, his voice steady and respectful. I am Finn, and I seek the water of the spring to prove my worth to the puka. The guardian regarded him with a steely gaze for a moment before agreeing. Very well, but you must answer a riddle to prove your intelligence before earning the right to take the water. In the forest I creep and crawl, without legs, but I move through all. I weave my way through earth and stones. In silence I work, with no flesh or bones. What am I? Finn thought carefully, his mind racing to find the answer as his eyes darted around the glen. At last, when he was afraid he would fail in his task, he spotted a large tree and the answer came to him. He smiled and replied, You are Roots. The guardian nodded, impressed by Finn's wisdom. You have answered correctly. You may take the water of the spring. Finn filled a small vial with the sparkling water and thanked the guardian before continuing on his journey. The final task took Finn and Bramble to the ruins of the old kingdom, a place steeped in legend and danger. The ruins were said to be haunted by the spirits of the past, and few dared to venture there. As they approached the ruins, a sense of foreboding hung in the air. The ancient stone structures, once grand and majestic, now lay in crumbling decay, overgrown with vines and moss. Finn and Bramble carefully navigated the ruins, their steps cautious and deliberate. The air was thick with an eerie silence, broken only by the occasional whisper of the wind. In the center of the ruins stood an ancient altar, upon which lay the stone they sought. The stone glowed with a faint magical light, its surface etched with ancient symbols. As Finn reached for the stone, a ghostly figure appeared before him. The spirit, clad in tattered remnants of royal robes, regarded him with a solemn gaze. Why do you seek the stone of the old kingdom? the spirit asked. Finn bowed respectfully. I seek the stone to complete the task set before me by the puka, and to gain the knowledge and understanding of the magic of this land. The spirit considered his words before nodding. You have shown respect as you have navigated through my kingdom, but the stone will determine if you possess the courage necessary to complete your quest. You may attempt to take the stone, but I caution you. If the stone deems you unworthy, you will perish in a towering blaze of fire as those who have sought it before you. If you succeed and are deemed worthy, I urge you to remember the lessons you have learned on your journey. And with that, the spirit disappeared. Finn's heart jumped to his throat as he felt frozen in place. Would the stone count him worthy or kill him where he stood? As the thoughts raced through his mind, he felt his trusty traveling companion pressing his weight into his legs, granting him comfort and grounding him. With Bramble's reassurance, Finn carefully lifted the stone, fearing the worst. 
As he held it, he felt its ancient power thrumming beneath its fingers. The stone in hand, the tightness in his chest dissipated, and they made their way back to the enchanted glen, the weight of their journey heavy upon them. Finn and Bramble returned to the enchanted glen, their task completed and their spirits lifted as they saw the puka waiting for them, its form once again that of the dark fairy. You have done well, Finn, the puka said, his voice filled with approval. You have proven yourself worthy and shown courage, wisdom, and respect for the magic of this land. Finn presented the puka with the golden feather, the vial of spring water, and the ancient stone. The puka accepted the offerings, its eyes gleaming with satisfaction. As a reward for your efforts, I will grant you the knowledge you speak, the puka said. But remember, with this knowledge you now have a responsibility to use it wisely and honor the ancient pacts between our worlds. The puka led Finn and Bramble to the crystal clear lake in the heart of the glen. As they stood by the water's edge, the puka began to wave a tale of ancient times when the mortal world and the realm of the fey were closely intertwined. The puka spoke of the ancient pacts that had been forged between the humans and the fey, agreements that ensured harmony and balance between the two realms. These pacts were based on mutual respect and understanding, acknowledging the magic that flowed through the land and the unseen forces that governed it. Finn listened intently, absorbing the wisdom of the puka's words. He learned the importance of honoring the spirits of the land, leaving offerings, and recognized the presence of the fae in their lives. He understood that the magic of the land was not something to be feared, but something to be respected and cherished. As the puka's tale came to an end, Finn felt a profound sense of connection to the land and its magic. He realized that his journey had not only been a test of his worthiness, but also a journey of self-discovery and enlightenment. With the knowledge of the fae in his heart, Finn returned to his village a changed man. He shared the wisdom he had gained with his fellow villagers, teaching them to respect the magic of the land and to honor the ancient pacts. His village flourished, its people living in harmony with the natural world. They left offerings for the puka and other spirits, acknowledging their presence and their influence on their lives. Finn's story became a cherished legend, passed down through the generations. The villagers spoke of his bravery, his wisdom, and his journey to the enchanted glen, inspiring others to seek understanding and respect for the mysteries of their world. The legend of the Puka and the Enchanted Glen continued to live on, a testament to the enduring power of myth and the importance of respecting the unknown. The Puka, true to its nature, remained a guardian of the Glen, watching over the land and its people with a blend of mischief and wisdom. For those who ventured into the Enchanted Glen, the Puka's presence was a reminder of the magic that existed just beyond the edge of the known world. It was a call to embrace the mysteries of life, to honor the ancient traditions, and to recognize the delicate balance between the moral world and the realm of the Fae. In the end, the tale of the Puka and the Enchanted Glen is more than just a story. It's a reflection of the timeless bond between humanity and the natural world, a bond that is both fragile and enduring. It reminds us that even in the modern world, there are still wonders to be discovered and mysteries to be explored, if only we had the courage to look beyond the ordinary and embrace the extraordinary. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the world of Pukas. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to stay updated on our latest explorations in the weird and wonderful aspects of our world. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.